Letting us off this hour is ABC's Morgan Norwood. She's nearby the scene there in Lewiston. So Morgan, Morgan, what more do we know about these victims now? Yeah, well, here within the past half hour, we have learned the names of five of the victims who tragically lost their lives in that horrific shooting. First up, we've got Joseph Walker. We're understanding that he was a manager at the Bar and Grill. That was the second location where they say the suspect, Robert Card, um, went. Bob Bialik killed at the bowling alley. His daughter-in-law reportedly was the youth bowling coach. Then you've got Trisha Oslin. She was also killed in that bowling alley. Stephen Vozella killed in that bar, that restaurant there. And Bill Brackett killed in the bar while playing cornhole, by the way. Cornhole, by the way. You know, what all these places have in common, Kira, is the fact that these are places that you go for reprieve from the world. You're looking for joy. You're looking for solace. You're hanging out, camaraderie. Um, but then in this case, you've got the world bringing violence to you. And tragically, it resulted in the deaths of, you know, 18 people. At this point, 14 people injured. Kira? You know, Morgan, it, it's, it's terribly sad, and it's also infuriating. And 18 people hurt. Uh, apparently, the, the suspect using the AR-15 type weapon, and we know the damage that can do. What do we know about the condition of those who are hurt in this shooting? Well, Terry, as you mentioned, we know that there were more than a dozen people injured, 14 of them brought here um, to this hospital right behind me. They held a press conference earlier today. They talked about how, you know, the minute that these calls went out about this situation, this active shooter situation, you know, their employees, they, they jumped right into their own humanity, right? There were 100 people who were off and they rushed right to the hospital to jump right into this level tra uh, level three trauma alert. Um, again, many of those victims treated right here at the hospital behind me. Five were told were in stable condition, three in critical condition. But, you know, one of the scenes that really grips me from outside of the hospital here, Terry, is, you know, last night, the moments after all of this broke, you just had dozens and dozens of people gathered outside of the hospital. They were holding hands. They were holding each other. You could tell that there was this real um, sense of anxiety, fear, and heartbreak as they awaited word about their loved ones. Some didn't even know whether, where their loved ones were, didn't, you know, hadn't gotten in touch with them, and they were just trying to figure out what was going on. Um, but that gives you a glimpse into um, just the level of heartbreak and, you know, the healing, both physically and mentally, um, that so many in this community are, are embarking on right now. Guys? So let's just talk about what we know now about police regarding uh, Robert Carr, this manhunt, all the agencies involved. Uh, do they still believe he could be within the area? We know he also has a boat license. A lot of questions. Yeah, a lot of questions. I mean, this is a sweeping, massive manhunt. Within the past hour, we actually got an emergency alert on our phones. With, that was Maine State Police just telling us that this, um, you know, uh, manhunt continues, that the, the statewide alert, the shelter-in-place alert for, for several cities, including the ones that we're in now, Lewiston, uh, was extended. But, you know, you've got officers on the ground, more than 350 law enforcement officers, um, you know, working this. And then you also have them, you know, uh, patrolling the skies as well. Every once in a while, we'll hear that chopper buzz, um, you know, as these choppers continue to look for Robert Carr. Um, you know, tactical teams, evidence teams, one thing that kind of stuck out for me, our, our, our reporting team on the ground has said that they've been talking with police and they've talked about how massive just, you know, the, the evidence search is. I mean, you've got multiple crime scenes, so they're having to deploy teams to, um, you know, those two crime scenes, both the bowling alley, you know, where the car was found, but then also um, that bar and restaurant, that second location here. But in these early, in this early investigation, you know, police are really zoned in on A, the motive, but then also the mindset I mean, the mental health aspect of Robert Card is really under investigation at this point as uh, authorities try to figure out what was the reason behind this horrific and seemingly senseless attack, guys. Oh, it, it, it is always the same, right? Something dark and terrible visited through firearms on, on innocent people. Morgan Norwood, thanks for being there for us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.